Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. Today we're going to talk about the new Autodesk Docs capabilities to manage ISO 19650 for the naming standards. What are we talking about? So those of you that are not familiar with the ISO 19650 at all, I'm just quickly going to show you here how everything started. They were roughly based in the previous British standards uh, regarding uh, information for building information modeling, but they were then talked about with different committees around the world. They gather way more information. And basically this ISO is the beginning to organize and digitize the information about buildings, civil engineering works, etc managing everything from teams, information, and like we know, the model. So there are different things to go more in depth about the ISO itself, but I'm going to quickly show you this article by our colleague here, Conrad Fugas. He's a BIM specialist I found in the BIM corner, and they have some of the images contained in the official document. So I'm going to just browse to the areas that I feel more relevant for those of you that are not familiarized with the ISO at all. And those of you that are, you can just skip this part and go into the functionality shared a bit later. So this chart, what it means working progress shared published archive. So as I was talking before, the ISO standard is managing the information and the processes that need to take place for a proper shared environment and collaboration in a project. In a project using building information modeling in theory. So these different stages or statuses of the documentation are called work in progress, shared, published, and archived. Work in progress means that there are different teams. Maybe there is the architectural team, the structural team, landscaping, etc. So each of the teams are working and it's in progress. That means they create a new model, new drawings, and there are changes and they are working on detailing more and more depending on the requirements of that particular project as well for the level of detail that the model needs, but think of it outside of the model, just as a project that it's ongoing. So after this working progress stage is done, the document can be then shared with other stakeholders. And after it's approved, it can be this check, review or approval between working progress and shared. It can go to another space to share with more uh, stakeholders. After the shared space, there can be another review or authorization, and then it will go into the published area. And finally, archive is when it's finished, right? But this process is not just one time. It can be a continuous work in progress, and then going to share, and then going to publish. And then there can be changes and have more documents that pass from work in progress to shared and publish, etc. So it's just the basis of how you're going to manage your documentation, your approvals, and we call hosting all of this information, which can be based on this ISO or not, because it could also be based on your own company standards, for example, but we call what hosts all this data, common data environment. So your common data environment, it's going to be that platform, that world will, where all this information is going to be uh, worked, then shared, then published with other stakeholders. And of course, it's going to be hosted in different folder structures. And those folder structures can have different permissions for the different stakeholders, the different roles, etc. So the folder that is going to host working progress documentation, it's going to be different than the folder holding shared documentation or the folder having published. So once we've talked about the different stakeholders in the project, the different stages or areas of our common data environment, I just want to quickly go 
and show you a little bit more about how the different statuses or codes used in the project and inside the CDE can be. So according to the ISO, we have, as we mentioned before, work in progress, we have shared, we have published, and uh, this published for AIM acceptance in case there is this contractual revision there. These codes, S0, S1, S2, S3, etc., are part of the metadata of this documentation and part of this process. So each of these codes represents something, for example, S0, initial status, S1, suitable for coordination, etc. So now that we talked about the statuses, the stages, I also want to quickly talk about what's a naming convention or naming standards. As I said before, you can have naming standards that are based in this ISO or project specific requirements or company requirements. So today's example, in the new functionality of Autodesk Docs, I'm going to show you the ISO compliant uh, naming convention. But of course, you can tweak this, you can modify it and customize according to your own preferences. In this case, uh, we have here Norwegian naming convention where they have certain letters, as you can see, for the revision, for the status. And in the British naming convention, or more similar to the one we're going to talk about today of the ISO, we have different codes and then we have these revisions and statuses according to the letters and numbers that we uh, talked about here. So now let's just jump into Autodesk Docs and I'm going to show you from scratch where you can find this new functionality. If you are in Autodesk Construction Cloud, inside Docs, but of course you could also see this from other modules like Build, you just go to the Files area, and in this Files area you will create the folders and subfolders as you wish. I'm just going to add some right now for the test, so let's say that we have the work in progress. I'm going to do it very basic, but just so you get an idea of what we are trying to talk about. So we have work in progress, we have a shared folder, then we have a published, published folder, and archive. But at the moment, I'm going to leave it with these three folders. So once you have your folders, you're going to be uploading different information to these folders. As we mentioned, if it's not an ISO 19650 project, it could be any company standards or just, you know, project folder structure that you need to comply with. So first, before we go into the details of the actual naming standard functionality, I just want to mention that part of these new capabilities on Autodesk Docs you have this holding area where it's basically where all the documents that you are uploading that haven't fulfilled the requirements of your naming standards yet will be held. That means that they are inside of Autodesk Construction Cloud, but they won't be officially um, published into that specific folder you are trying to upload them until the naming standards are satisfied. So all we have to do is coming to the settings and naming standards. So the attributes is the functionality that you are, you are already familiar with, which can be, again, drop down, text, etc. Any attributes that you want to associate to a certain file inside of Autodesk Docs, you can still do that. But now with the naming standards, you can view and apply these default ISO naming standards and it's going to have this order, project, originator, volume system, level location, type, role, number, and then some related attributes, which are also relevant because of the standards like status, revision, and classification. But again, as I mentioned before, I'm just going to click apply here. You can customize this later on and make them into whatever you want if it's not an ISO compliant project. So we have the basics here. We have the mention of the holding area. 
you can decide if you want to enable the holding area or not. And then you will select the folders where you want to enforce these naming standards. So let's assume that I am agreeing with the ISO convention. I'm just going to proceed and select the folders that we just created. Let's say that this will apply to all of them or just one of them. So this is entirely up to you. You will just select. And then if you want to customize the naming standard, you will just click here. And now we're going into the details of the actual naming convention that it's being followed with Autodesk Docs. We have the name of the project. We know it's a text field and we can modify the required characters from two to six. You can do it up to 10. Then you can select in the settings what's going to connect the different components of your naming standards. In this case, it's a hyphen. It can be an underscore or a point. And like we mentioned before, we have the statuses already loaded, similar to what we saw previously in the article, the revisions, and the classification system that we wish to use. You can always add extra related attributes to this, make it as complex or as simple as you want. This is just the out of the box functionality based on the ISO standards. If we go to originator, we'll also have that this attribute in particular is a drop down menu and there's a certain code. So for example, let's say we want to add more codes, we'll just click change and we can add more codes. Okay. You can also add a description here and then save this attribute. So as you can see, it's very simple to modify your standards. You can do it based on ISO, company, project standards, and test out the different naming conventions and see what works best for you. All I want to show you in today's video is how simple it is and how you can even get this preview here with the hyphen how we've selected today. Now, this attribute, for example, volume system, it's again, it's a drop down level location. We have also a drop down menu, type, role, for example, architect, civil engineer, building surveyor, etc. It's also a drop down and number, which is a text field. Now, if this uh, out of the box attributes aren't enough or what we want, we can also always simply drag and drop to change the order or add new attributes. For this, in this case, I don't have any previously created attributes, but let's go and create one just to test it out. I'm gonna save and apply so we don't lose what we are working on. And we'll go back to the attributes here, which are the normal attributes that you already know. We have different types of attributes. So if we create one, we'll have these different options, text field, date, drop down list. Let's say we're going to make this one a text field and the attribute is going to be a, a project code. that's a special, maybe it has to do with the department or something. Okay, and we create these additional attributes. Now we go back to the naming standard, we customize, and we have our newly created attribute here. We can add it and we can again drag and drop this attribute according to our preferences. I hope that this quick video was useful for you. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. See you next time.